some technical difficulty on some of our microphones. Welcome to the Hibbing Alliance Church. We are here to prayerfully build relationships to impact lives with the transforming power of Jesus Christ for the growth of God's kingdom. We are in the throngs of our Christmas celebration, celebrating the birth and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior to the world. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Luke if he will begin by leading us in the uh, Advent candle. For centuries, the Jewish people have echoed the sentiment of hope, looking for the consolation of Israel, a term still used in modern Judaism today. It speaks of the fulfillment of hope in the advent, the coming of the Messiah. Simeon, a devout man of God, not only is made aware of the fulfillment of the promised Messiah's arrival, but as he is led by the Holy Spirit, he is to hold the Christ child in his arms and to prophesy the redemption that has come to all mankind. Simeon is consoled in knowing that the baby Jesus is the king who will redeem Israel as well as all people who embrace him as their savior. Our scripture reading is Luke 2, 25 through 35. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents had brought the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bod servant to depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people of Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at these things which were said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and for a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. This is the heart of Christmas, the wonderful, powerful, and great news that our Savior has come in the person of a little child. The incarnate child would, not, would one day declare, say, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came so you may have life and have it abundantly. This is our joy and our exhilaration. It is a wonderful and blessed gift that salvation has come, that the light has come into the earth. And my prayer this morning for us, for the church, um, is a journal I had earlier this week, and I was reflecting on Advent and Christmas and thinking how some people don't celebrate it the way I want them to celebrate it. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and enlightening my eyes to see things how they really were. So let us pray. Father, it is so easy for us to criticize everyone else who aren't doing Advent and Christmas the right way to take the religious high ground and look down on everyone else. But that isn't what this season is about. It's about longing for Jesus, to eagerly wait for the promise to be fulfilled. It's about finding the speck of light in the midst of the darkness, or to recognize that it is so dark and all that we have is hope that the light may one day come. It is to say, I need Jesus or we need Jesus, or simply Jesus. To see light in others and to accept the light in ourselves, but also to accept the dark in ourselves, that the world is broken, that we are broken, and that we had a part in the breaking of the world. So in the midst of the dark, broken world, we scream and we whisper, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, 
I can share just a couple of announcements before we receive the offering this morning. One of those is going to be in a video form. We are going to have a Christmas Eve service, as we always do, on December 24th at 5 p.m. And that, during that night, we're going to take an offering, and I'll explain that offering to you on the video in just a few moments. But it's for what's called the year-end offering of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. And the Alliance, and this is the neat thing you'll see in the video, is God has positioned the Christian Missionary Alliance to be ministering in every country that you have seen in the news that is having great difficulty with the Ebola and the ISIS movement and all those kind of things. The Alliance is there. And so we got to be praying for our people because obviously there's danger in those areas that they're serving. But this year in offering is to continue the work of what's going on there, and it is above and beyond what you had maybe have already promised through a faith promise. And so that offering will be taken on Christmas Eve, but we want to show it ahead of time because the governing board said there may be some people that are traveling on Christmas Eve and they won't be here, and so if they want to give toward that, we want to make that available to them. And so we're going to be announcing this a couple of times prior to the Christmas Eve service. I just want to encourage you this coming Saturday is Making Healthy Disciples Workshop from 9 a.m. to noon. I've shortened it by an hour, and uh, so you get an extra time to, to wake up. But if you are a leader, and I cannot stress this. Matter of fact, I'm going to be sending out invitations this week to some of you that I really would like you to come. And you already know who you are if you haven't been here yet and you're in leadership. Um, because this is the tool that we'll be using as we begin to evaluate all the ministries of our congregation and Sunday school, clubs, nursery, the whole nine yards. And so as, as leaders, you want to be a part of what is this entailing. So if you've been on the... Uh, retool kit and you haven't taken this uh, training yet if, if you're a leader in a committee or a department you haven't taken this yet then please now if someone asks me I, I've taken it once but I kind of forgot you know we've done it twice and can I take it again certainly you can but we do have manuals that we use during the three-hour block and so I need to know who is coming so that we can make sure we have enough manuals and that's this Saturday from 9 to noon and I really, again, want to emphasize, if you haven't taken it and you're in that leadership capacity, anyone can take it, but especially those, <laughs> you're, you know, we come to you and go, hey, guess what, we're evaluating your committee and you don't know how we're doing it. Um, uh, this is to give you an opportunity to be in on the process. Uh, that's all the announcements we're going to make. There are others there, Christmas caroling, other kind of things are happening. Please pay attention to that. Uh, Mark Locato excuse me, Max Lucado said, prayer lets God do what he does best. Take a pebble and kill a Goliath. Take the common and make it spectacular. Pray and see what he can do. Listen, at the end of the service, today's Communion Sunday, at the end of the service, we offer opportunity for people to come forward to be prayed over that God might heal them. It always astounds me that later on people go, well, I know that you have made that and I was going to, but then I didn't. And it's kind of like, okay, why? I mean, I don't say it because I'm a very polite guy. But why? I mean, God says, come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He gives us the invitation, and we go, I know I should have, but I didn't. And the question is, why? Is God our healer or not? Do you believe it or not? Let the results be his. He wants us to step out in obedience. So if you need prayer this morning, I just want to encourage you to come up and seek God and let God give the results that he has for you, okay? And plus, we're coming to the communion table, so examine yourselves. Begin the process now to make sure that we are not guilty of the body or the blood of the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers that they'll come forward this time. And as they're receiving the offering, uh, and crew, we're just going to watch this video together. And then after the video is done, we'll go into our worship music package, okay? But let's pray as we uh, prepare to give. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for the people who are here and the people who will hear the message on the TV. For the people that cannot be here or aren't here for one reason or another, I pray, God, that you will manifest your presence right now in their life. That, Father, if for whatever reason they're, they're doing other things because they think it's more important than fellowshipping with God's people, Lord, I pray that you will speak to them according to what you want them to know. 
I pray, Heavenly Father, for those that may be here, and maybe they are going through some kind of suffering, some kind of physical illness, some kind of, of grief, some kind of issue in their life, God, that they just want something more from you. For, for whatever reason, the enemy has convinced them, don't ask, they're not worthy, or don't, in, don't interrupt God, or whatever it is, God, I just pray against those lies, and I pray now that we will receive the blessing that you have for us, the presence of God Almighty in our midst. Father, I just pray that uh, you will also be with the, the situation in our country, with the upheaval of the stuff that's going on with the Ferguson, Missouri deal, and and Lord, how it's affecting all of the respect for law enforcement across the country. I pray for the protection of these men and women who every day put themselves in harm's way. I pray, God, that no one will make a foolish emotional act that's going to harm another person's life. And I pray, Father, for the wisdom and, and the training for these law enforcement personnel that, they, that Lord, they follow the procedures that, that they're given. Lord, I just do pray for the peace of God upon us a peace that passes all understanding, especially during this time of year where we talk about peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Lord, be blessed now as we worship you in the giving of our offerings and the giving of ourselves, the giving of our music. Lord God, I just pray that we enter into your presence and you speak to us about what you want us to hear today. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as the offering is being taken, this, remember, this is about the offering that's coming up in Christmas Eve service, but uh, please watch the video. I watch the same news you do, but I confess I watch it differently now that I'm the president of the Alliance. You know what this year's been like. Almost every newspaper or newscast informed us of tensions between Russia and Ukraine, masses fleeing Syria, Broken ceasefires between Israel and Palestine. ISIS marching across Iraq. Ebola marching across West Africa. You've seen the headlines. What you may not know is that we are there. Years ago, the sovereign hand of God placed the alliance in the very regions that now receive world attention. Decades of your prayers, financial contributions, and your sending of workers now position us by God's direction in the places of great turmoil. In a God-orchestrated way, the Alliance is present with teams who know the language and culture of the people. And of course, they know something most of the local people do not know, the love of Jesus. In some of these locales, it's the National Church that remains to carry out the work. Receiving the refugee, grieving with the mourner, sheltering the homeless, all in the life-changing name of Jesus, and doing so at the risk of their very lives. In other places, our international workers remain as foreigners in blood-stained lands, doing what we're called to do, bring the gospel in word and deed, for lives to be changed, souls to be saved, and Christ's church to be built. These sent ones are committed for the long haul, often refusing opportunities to come home so as not to abandon the suffering. Some of our team members are having unprecedented opportunities to lead people to Jesus, and they don't want to miss it. Even though the headlines change, we remain. These are places where we are active. These are days we must be in prayer. These are reasons to give to the Alliance. These are opportunities to make Christ known. And all this is in preparation for the return of Christ himself. I'm so honored to be part of this family that God has raised up for times such as these. And I'm very pleased to report that this year, nearly four dozen new missionaries, each of them called, trained, and equipped, have been sent to reinforce our teams and open new ministries. Think about this. Together, we're engaged in history's most significant work, preparing the way for the return of Christ by bringing the gospel to Earth's least reached places. That's the greatest headline of all. This is why, once again, my wife and I are joyfully giving a year-end offering to the Alliance. Please consider this my invitation to you to do so as well. The vast majority of the resources that forward this great work come through the giving of our Alliance family. It's us, you and me, that make this happen. Gifts, small and large, advance our mission. So thank you to those who've given in the past. Thank you 
to those who will give this year. Please join us. God's peace to you. Amen. We are welcome to stand with us as we continue now to worship the Lord in music. If you cannot be here on Christmas Eve and you want to give to that cause, make sure you put in the memo uh, year-end offering. Let's sing together to the praise of our King.
Thank you, Lord. We do adore your name, for it is the name above all names. The name that, Lord, everyone, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Be Impact us, Lord Jesus, with who you are as we listen to your word today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We are looking at precious moments, and you have, we have the decorations to help remind you of that, but precious moments during the Advent. What were some of the things that happened? And we're taking them out of chronological order because obviously the birth part doesn't, you know, we don't celebrate that till December 25th, and we're looking at events that happened after the birth took place as a starting point. Last week we did look at Mary's response Mary being blessed as the angel Gabriel announced to her that she would carry the Messiah. Today we're going to jump now. The baby has been born. And I'm going to read this passage of Scripture. Luke read part of it uh, during the Advent reading. But I want to put it in the total context from Luke 2, verse 21 and following. And when eight days had passed before his circumcision, his name was then called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days for their purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now look. Or now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and for a sign to be opposed, and a sword will pierce even your own soul, so, to the end that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Father, as we look at this somewhat obscure passage of Scripture that we don't look at a lot, that you will bring out to us, Lord, its significance and its importance. Especially as we move toward the Lord's Supper. I pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Life's precious moments, sometimes they happen unexpectedly. Like a surprise visit from a loved one that didn't tell you they were coming. They show up at your door, they knock, and oh, it's so good to see you. That's a precious moment. Other precious moments take a little longer, months or years perhaps, like a long-awaited birth, nine months of this waiting for this precious moment when the baby comes into being. Or other things like a long overdue salary increase or promotion or something you thought you should have got quite a while ago. It finally arrives. It's a precious moment. Precious moment. We learn of today as one where Simeon's whole life was moving to this one precious moment. It is because, first of all, of faith-filled living. His faith-filled living, the faith-filled living of two people in this story, brought blessing. The first was Mary and Joseph, because they were obedient 
which brought them blessing. It says two things that happened. Number one, it says at the beginning of this passage of Scripture that they were going through the process of the circumcision. They didn't name the child till the eighth day, or the day of circumcision, and they went through that process. And then they had to go through the process of the purification of Mary, who gave birth. And it was 40 days after the birth was, was, was given that then they would go through the 40 days of purification. Then they would go to the temple, and they would, they would then present the child who had been circumcised, and they, would, and they would go through the process of the purification process with the turtle doves or with the pigeons, and they were obeying the law of God. Why did they go to the temple? It wasn't to meet this man Simeon. They probably didn't even know he was there. They went to obey God in the laws that he'd given them about circumcision and purification. And that obedience act of following God's plan, even though it meant going on a trip and all these things with a newborn baby, it brought blessing. A more blessing than they imagined. Now, they imagined there'd be blessing. I mean, here, give the baby, you know, and, and go through this process. And they imagined there would be the blessing of, the, of the, the sacrifice of the animals. But they had no clue what was coming. And here's Simeon. Simeon, some believe, were, was a priest. And there's, there's, there's evidence to support that, but not for sure. And here's Simeon. And his steadfastness brings blessing. He waits on the Lord, and he waits, and he waits, and he waits, and he waits. He does not give up, even though it was a long time for him to experience this blessing. So here's this man, Simeon. Look, 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 look his name up in, the, in, in your concordances and so forth. How many times does the name Simeon show up in your Bibles? Mm, here. There's Simon's, but Simeon's different. And here's this man, in these few verses, gets this huge honor. He gets to bless two different situations here. The first one is he blesses, Simeon blesses God. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a twofold blessing, if you will, because when we read this with the, with the eyes of the, you know, Mary and Joseph there and Jesus being there and so forth, and it says and he blesses God, and what he's doing is he's acknowledging the promise fulfilled to God, so he's thanking God. The word blessing there means that he is consecrating, he is praising, he is expressing his joy over the fulfilled promise that has been given to him. And so when we read that, most of us read that as though he is blessing God the Father for the fulfilled promise, which is true. But understand, God the Son is in his arms, and he is blessing God. He is holding the embodiment of a fulfilled promise, not only to him, but to all humanity. And so he acknowledges that. Luke 29, or in 2 29, it says, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. You have fulfilled your promise to me. I, I read one of the uh, commentaries I read made a statement, it's like, you got, I just don't, I don't get that part. And what it was, was the person said that, that Simeon was focused on the fact, ah, oh, now I can finally die. Seriously? That's what, that was the whole thing, like, oh, I got to see the Christ child, now I can go, I, I'm done, I can give it up, I can retire, go to heaven, whatever. I don't think so. I think what he saw, and according to what I'm reading, is he saw that this long-awaited promise of God to the people of Israel and to the world it's here it's here we're going to read more about this next week when we get to Anna but but in the Jewish law that when they wanted to testify about something they had to have two at least two people testify of the same event 
that they witnessed the same event. And so in this passage of Scripture, you have the testimony of Simeon, and next week, even though it's going to be a whole week before we get to her, she comes on the heels of Simeon. I mean, they're all there at the same time testifying, this is the Messiah. And so Simeon blesses God and acknowledges the promise to him has been fulfilled, but more so the promise to Israel, to the world, has been fulfilled. And then Simeon also blesses the parents, the stepdad, Joseph, and the mom. And he prophesies the mission of their child, Jesus. In Luke uh, 2.34, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel. Isn't it interesting? Because normally when you read about people groups, it's always the rise and the fall. In this case, he goes, it's for the fall and the rise of Israel. There has to be some humility here. There has to be some recognition that it is about God, not about the nation itself. It's for a sign to be opposed. People will push against this Savior, and a sword will pierce even your own soul, Mary. And what I think about at that point is when she's watching her son in, hum- in an adult form going down the Via Della Rosa, the, the, the way of suffering, and he's going to the cross, and she's at the foot of the cross, and she's watching her son die on the cross. It will pierce your own soul to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. It's for a grand purpose. So Simeon blesses God and he blesses the parents and he prophesies of the mission of Jesus. Now it is a double-edged blessing and that's what I want to look at. First of all, there is the Christ child. This is very interesting in, in verse 26. It says this, And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, being a good Jew and possibly a priest, I'm sure that he's praying for the peace of Jerusalem. He's praying that the tyranny and, the, and all the stuff that Israel is enduring because they had walked away from the law of Moses, they're only practicing in most cases religiously, but they are under this oppression, and he's praying, God, you promised that one day there would be the consolation of Israel, the comfort of Israel. And as he's praying, some point in his life, as he's praying, as he's seeking God for the consolation of Israel, by the way, it's a very popular term even today in modern Judaism, as he's praying for that, the Holy Spirit comes down and says, Simeon, You will not die until you see this happen. Why him? I don't know. I don't know, and you don't know either. Except the hint is, the common denominator, remember we talked about Zacharias and Elizabeth, and they were going to give birth to John the Baptist, the you know, the one that would proclaim, the predecessor to Jesus would proclaim that the Messiah has come and the Savior is here and so forth. And what was the one thing that the Scriptures said about Zacharias? He was a devout and righteous man. And look what it says about Simeon. It says he was a devout and righteous man. Do you think maybe there's a connection here between the blessing of God and the lives of people? And that the blessing comes, as we've already talked about, faith-filled living brings blessing. Mary and Joseph, Mar- Mary, Mary, do you get to carry the Christ child? Why? It doesn't say these words exactly, but we can certainly see the inference. Because you are faithful to God, because you are righteous before Him, because you believe He can do anything. And so you get to carry the Christ child. Zacharias and Elizabeth, you get, to, you get to see the birth of John the Baptist. Simeon, you get to hold the Christ child and offer him to the Lord God in blessing. So there's the Christ child, the Messiah, 
the word Christ. And by the way, the way it, 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 it's spoken here in uh, verse 26, it says, And it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Lord's Messiah, the Lord's anointed, is how that's, trans, how that's interpreted. That you will get to see the one anointed for the redemption of the world. So it's more than this very um, Roman, uh, Norman Rockwell kind of picturesque, you know, old man holding a baby, here's Jesus. It's more than just that. He had prayed for the consolation of Israel. The consolation means comfort. Where did he get that from? Let's go back a little bit and look at that as, he's, as we're talking about the, the anointed one. In Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah, prophet of God, Old Testament, 700 some years before. Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Call out to her. And her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Get yourself up on a high mountain, O Zion, bearer of good news. Lift up your voice mightily, O Jerusalem, bearer of good news. Lift it up. Do not fear, says, uh, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with might and with arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend to his flock in his arm. He will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Comfort, oh, comfort Israel. The redemption of God is what this is talking about. God will take away all that, in, that, that harm, that warfare, the iniquity, and all this kind of stuff that's going on. And so this is what they're praying for. We're praying for that comfort, that consolation of Israel. And then suddenly, this happens. I shouldn't say suddenly because it took a long time, but this happens in fulfillment of the Scriptures. And look, look at verse uh, 30 in Luke now. We're back to Luke chapter 2. When Simeon's giving this statement, he says, For my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, he is speaking, I'm sure, because Hebrew. He would have said this in Hebrew. And the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua. And so he's holding up God, Emmanuel. And he's saying, I have seen Yeshua, the salvation of the world. Yeshua, the one who purchases from slavery, where enemies are vanquished, where redemption comes. Go back to Isaiah, this time chapter 52, verse 7. Listen to this, and, and you're going to get the connection real quick. I'm, I'm still going to give it to you anyway. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Is that not, by the way, what Simeon just did in that moment where he was lifting up the Christ child? He was announcing the good news that our God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. They shout joyfully together, for they will see with their own eye when the Lord restores Zion. Break forth, shout joyfully together. You waste place of, places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people interesting pray for the consolation the comfort the lord has comforted his people he has redeemed jerusalem the lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our god listen this man simeon all of this as a good hebrew he had understood all this isaiah was one of the favorite favorite passages of scriptures for the hebrew people still is and suddenly all this is coming to fruition for him. He is standing there. It's like, this is it. This is what we as a nation have been waiting for. It is God incarnate. God with us. This is that moment in his life. It wasn't about, oh, now I can die. It's like, ah, now I can die. Because I know that the redemption has come. 
the revelation, the truth of the Redeemer has been revealed. And that's what he talks about in verses 32 through 35 there. But I want to bring you back now as we talk about Isaiah 52 to Romans chapter 10. Because that, I, I said you probably already got it, but I'm going to bring you there anyway. So we're moving from the prophecy spoken in by Isaiah to the reality spoken in Romans 10. Verse 8, what, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Understand, concept-wise, I need to just clarify this. It's pretty self-revelant, I guess, but I want to make sure we all know Jesus has been born, he has been grown up, he has put on the cross, he has suffered, bled, and died, he was put in the grave, resurrected, and now the church has been born, and Paul, writing uh, to the church in Rome, says this, What does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. Here's the message. Okay? Now I realize we covered a lot of ground between Simeon be, uh, blessing Jesus and now this moment. But these are connected. And it says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe that this little child that Simeon raised up to God the Father is the Son of God, and the Son of Man. And He came as redemption for all humanity. And confess that you will be saved. For with a heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the Scripture says, whoever believes in Him will not be disappointed. And understand, it's in Him not about him. It's huge. There are a lot of people in our world right now. They're putting up nativity scenes and they're and they're and they're doing the Christmas thing and they're going to Christmas concerts and they're saying, "Oh, isn't this a beautiful pageantry of the nativity?" That's and but they're, what they're doing is they're believing about him, but they're not believing in him. One's an understanding that this is, he is who he says he is. The other one is, "I surrender to him as my Savior and Lord." And whoever believes in him will be saved. For with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness. And the mouth confesses resulting in salvation. There is no distinction then between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever it is, recognize it, accept it, receive it for yourself, they will be saved. doesn't matter what nationality they are doesn't matter what social economic group they are doesn't matter what nationality they are doesn't matter what they've been a part of before no matter how vile it may be whoever calls upon the name of the lord jesus christ and surrenders to him will be saved amen that's why the angels and we'll talk about them later on in this series too but that's why the angels said peace on earth it's not a peace that humanity is going to bring to us, but rather one Emmanuel will. Well, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him who they have not heard about? How will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, here we come back to Isaiah 52, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. See all that connection? Isn't that awesome? See, this is what Christmas is about. It isn't about the pageantry. I love it all. I love the presents. I love the trees and all that stuff that goes with it, all the colors. And I thank my neighbors for putting up lights in their house so I don't have to. It's great. But that's not what Christmas is about. It's about God with us. And humanity recognizing this is the Son of God. This is salvation come to humanity. 
And so Simeon, a righteous man, gets the privilege of holding this child. And for some odd reason, maybe it's because of Lion King, but I, I, you know, I get this picture of holding him up here, you know. It's like, God, I dedicate him, I consecrate him back to your service. The anointed one has come. Have you ever made that statement like, oh, this was so great, you know, I, I could die right now. And, go, you know, I'd be happy. That, that's, that's Simeon's statement. It's not, I want to die. I'm glad this happened so I can kind of go away. It's like, God promised. It's been fulfilled. I could die tonight. Hallelujah. More is going to come next week as we see the precious moments with Anna proclaims. Did I cover everything? Oh yeah, here we go. Simeon blesses, uh, blessings declares a Savior for both the Jews and Gentiles, by the way. And he recognized that. Yeshua, the salvation for all. We have a communion table that also brings, should bring all of this, this whole story into perspective. Because it reminds us the redemption, sacrifice of Jesus as Savior. For if it was not for Jesus coming and being born the Son of Man, I believe, it, I, I believe because the way that God set it up, that we would not be able to identify in Him. We would look almost like Greek mythology looks at all, you know, Zeus and all these, like they're the big baddies out there and they do whatever they want and we're the poor, you know, we're, we're always picked on by, the, by the, the gods. But our God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. It wasn't this God that's distant, but it's God, Emmanuel, God with us. And then he puts people along the way to acknowledge and to substantiate this truth. And Simeon's one of those guys. <laughs> what a blessed man. What an honor. And next week we're going to talk about how Anna proclaims. By the way, this is just a, a little prequel, but Anna is the prophetess. Simeon is possibly the priest or the preacher. And yet Simeon prophesies and Anna proclaims. Figure that one out. We'll talk more about that next week. Right now, let's come to the Lord's table. We are here because God wants us to be reminded of his love for us and of his sacrifice for us. That he wants us to surrender to him on every day level, day in and day out, that we would surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. In these elements we have uh, the bread, which represents the body of Christ. Isaiah again talks about that. He says about the body of Christ, that through his stripes we can be healed. By the way, that again is a double-edged meaning there. One is, of course, we're healed from sin through the, through the shed blood of Christ. But the other is that we can experience and anticipate physical healing for the body. Jesus actually quotes that passage of Scripture when he's healing somebody in the book of Matthew. And so that's why we offer at the communion table, we say, here's an opportunity. It doesn't have to be just at the communion table, and it, and it, and it, and it kind of frustrates me that it's like, oh, i got to wait till communion to be asked for prayer. No, that's not the case. But we certainly want you to be prepared because the Scripture does say when we come to the elements, we're to examine ourselves. And one of the barriers to healing is that we have unconfessed sin. Sometimes is one of the barriers. And when we come to communion, we challenge all of us to examine ourselves so that we can take of the elements. Well, if we examine ourselves for that purpose, then we're ready to receive that which God might have for us in the area of divine healing. And so the first thing is then we want to examine ourselves. In 1 Corinthians, when it gives kind of the formula of the Lord's table, it says that we are to examine ourselves for if we don't do it correctly, the Holy Spirit will do it. And for this reason, some of you are sick even. And some of you have even died. 
That's a very ominous and serious, reverent thing. But he goes on to say, but so examine yourselves so that you're not found guilty of the body or the blood of the Lord. So I say this occasionally uh, when we talk about this part of it, but if you're here today and, and you know there's something that you're butting up against with God and you're not willing to deal with it, then please don't take the elements. Because we don't want to be guilty of the body or the blood of the Lord. On the other hand, if the Spirit gives us something, He's saying, I'm giving you opportunity. This is to remind you what Jesus did for you. So call upon Him and ask Him to forgive you. Repent of your sins again and say, God, clean that up in my life and let me walk in the way of righteousness. That's what this is for. And then we celebrate when we take the elements. Thank you, God, for forgiving me of my sins. For my salvation and for constantly coming after me so that I don't walk away from you. So we're going to take a few moments to examine ourselves. And then I'm going to have you, as we're singing, I'm going to have you come up uh, as we sing and take the elements. If you want prayer, I would encourage you just to stay here and sit. And, and our elders and our deaconesses who are ready to pray for you will come up and just pray with you. Um, if you are looking for healing and you want to be anointed with oil, we have the oil here according to James chapter 5, and so we can, we, we can process that with you as we pray by faith and believing God is a God that heals. Let this be a time that's not just a religious practice, but it's truly seeking, walking into the presence of God and seeking from Him that which He would have for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much. I pray that, I don't know how this would work really, but, but the, the blessing that Simeon received as he encountered Christ for the first time, that, Lord, you would manifest yourself in us as we worship you at the table. That we would, we would Lord, receive. We would experience that same kind of blessing that same kind of encounter with you god where we are we are aware of the salvation not even of us but the salvation you bring to all the world if we'll just reach out and receive that gift thank you jesus for allowing yourself to be brutalized suffer bled and die so that your body and your, and your blood would have a huge significance for all humanity of salvation and redemption and healing. Now, Lord, examine our hearts. Hear the prayers of your people. If there is an area, Lord, that you want to touch on in a person's life, I pray right now, right now, that your Holy Spirit speak to them and that, Lord, they deal with that with you. And then when we come to the table, then, Lord, let us rejoice and celebrate together the goodness of God with us, the redemption that we have experienced and the ongoing life of righteousness that we can live as we surrender daily to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take just a few more minutes of quiet as you examine yourselves and would you play as the choir continues.
going to ask that you would stand with us. If you are incapable of coming forward to receive the elements, please raise your hand and someone can bring that to you. Our elders would be happy to do that. Um, what we're asking again, and what I'm asking you to do is when you're, when you're ready, come up and grab both the bread and the cup and take it back to your seat. And you can, you can eat the bread and drink the cup when you feel that you are ready as a family or as an individual or however you want to do it. But when you're ready, uh, take it this morning uh, unto the Lord. If you desire for prayer, I'm going to encourage you to, to just stay up here for a little bit and let people pray over you as we're singing these final two songs. So when you're ready, as we sing, feel free to come and receive the elements.
you are our friend. Father God, I pray for each person has stepped forward and said, God, bring a healing in my life or a healing in the life of someone else that I, I love or I care about. Father, I just pray now that your spirit fall upon us. Come upon us, Lord. Let the healing touch be felt and experienced by these folks. We praise you, Lord, for how you answer each of these people's prayer. We pray by faith. We believe by faith that, God, you are all-powerful. You are a miracle worker. And we know, God, that how you work in our lives, whether it be according to our expectation or not, how you desire to work in our lives, we give you glory. We praise your holy name. Lord, bring healing now, I pray in Jesus' name. Be with these folks, Lord Jesus, as they go about their day and their week. Let the Spirit of God be upon them. Let each of us be a witness of the declaration, like Simeon said, that this is the anointed one. Thank you, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please go quietly and go in God's peace.